Welcome everybody on uh, today's date, which is the 8th of uh, December 2020. And uh, it's my absolute pleasure to be uh, with um, Catherine Jesse and Sylvie Bartlett Rawlings this evening, having a look at creative language teaching with Sparkjar. Uh, this event is completely free to, um, to attend. Uh, it's fantastic to see some familiar faces in uh, the session this evening. We are recording this. Uh, this is going to be available on my YouTube channel, which is available at uh, Joe Dale 100. Just go onto YouTube and do a search for Joe Dale 100 and you will be able to find this uh, either this evening, um, depending how tired I am, or certainly by tomorrow morning, it will be available. So without further ado, um, I'm going to hand over to Catherine, who's going to introduce herself, and then she will then hand over to Sylvie, who's going to uh, be showcasing lots of ways in which spark jar can be used for language teaching in particular so i can't wait to get started over to you catherine and thank you ever so much for agreeing to do this for us brilliant thank you very much joe um good evening so as joe has already said my name is catherine jesse and i'm joined this evening by sylvie bartlett rawlings um i will let sylvie do the kind of main introduction to herself but just to say um she is one of our sort of excellent practitioners in terms of using Sparkjar, um, but also in terms of being a brilliant practitioner in her classroom. Um, and I'm really pleased that she's been able to join us this evening and, and, and share lots of examples from her work at school and the work of her department at Danata. Um, a little bit about me and Sparkjar. So I am a part-time science teacher and also I work part-time with Sparkjar as teacher champion. I have been teaching for 14 years and with iPads uh, or digital technology in my lessons um, like one-to-one -one devices since 2014. Um, and I'm also an Apple Distinguished Educator. So I'm really keen on using tech in lessons. I think that um, being able to use technology for teachers is hugely powerful um, for enhancing, facilitating learning. But I also think that technology um, should work really hard for us. And I, I got involved with Sparkjar because um, as developers, the company behind the app wanted to find a way to help teachers do their job and, and do it in a really powerful way. Um, and obviously technology has lots of options that can help us as teachers, but we need it to work in really um, effective ways for us. And that means having a teacher on staff to help drive that. Um, and having people like Sylvie, who give us lots of ideas for future development um, and uh, ways to, to try and tweak things so that the technology is, is allowing teachers to um, do great things, but without making their lives more difficult. We're going to focus obviously on um, the languages classroom, but um, particularly on how technology can support at this, at this current time with all the challenges that we've been facing during the pandemic. Um, so things that we can't currently do in classrooms because of not allowing students to uh, get up and move around or the fact they maybe even have to stay in the same classroom the whole time, the same seating plan. So collaborating between each other will look at ways in which using technology can help in, ensure that can still happen. Um, we'll also look at how at the moment, I don't, it, it seems to differ between different schools, but in my school, we're not allowed to take books in. We're not marking books and we have to quarantine any kind of test papers or other work that we collect from students. So looking at how technology can allow us to view more of student work, um, even though we can't actually physically look at their books and so on. And then the, the changes that have been happening, it's been brilliant from a perspective of um, ensuring that teachers are galvanized to use technology and there's a real will and an interest to do so. Um, but obviously anything new that you bring in, any changes that are made, they mean more work effectively for teachers. So um, but the way that we look at it at Sparkjar is trying to make sure that the, the, the technology that we put in place, the things that our app can do, um, and help teachers do things but much more quickly, more easily than they would if they didn't have technology, rather than just replacing the, the tasks that we'd already do with a digital alternative. It's about refining that and making that process faster by using the power of, of technology instead. So we'll look at ways in which we've sort of worked um, together with teachers to, to figure out ways to make those processes as efficient and effective as possible. 
as we go through, I will be doing like a little tour of the app to, to give you the context for the examples that Sylvia is going to share. So I'm going to do that now with a little sort of uh, very, very brief, quick tour to give you some context, because I presume that you probably haven't ever seen it before. Um, just to say this, this app is for iPads. Um, it, uh, we're going to focus on using SparkJar, but uh, pretty much every example that Sylvia is going to give today is, is achievable with other products. So if your school hasn't got iPads, uh, if you're using a different workflow product at the moment, um, an app or a website, you can probably tailor what we're suggesting, things that Sylvia is doing to your circumstance, which hopefully will be helpful to you. So I'll just stop this share. Oh, skip that there. And I'm going to switch to my iPad screen just to show you the app. So you can now see my iPad screen. And this is um, a playground version of the app. So um, everything in here is fake. This is what I use to test it out, to try things, um, to make videos of the app and to support users. Um, so all the students who are in here are completely fake and I can switch between them. So you can see I've got five students. It's like the dream class. Um, two of those people are real people. Two of them, Nathan and Tom are developers from our team, but everybody else there is fake stock photos, et cetera. Um, and this playground allows you to switch. Um, so say for instance, you wanted to try out the app and, and um, that's a totally a possibility. We'll share a little form you can fill in towards the end um, to indicate that you'd like to do that. You can switch between student view and teacher view and just see how it looks between the two and, and get a feel for it that way. So as a teacher, when you open the app, you can see your class is all down the left and um, within each class, it's got the same structure. So every class has a chat, assignments, topics, groups and mark sheet. And I'll start here just with assignments because this is what's most similar across all different digital workflow apps. So basically setting a piece of work for students to do, giving them resources to use, asking for them to submit work back. We have the same workflow in terms of set an assignment, set a due date. Um, we help teachers by um, allowing them to specify that students only upload files that are really quick and easy to annotate and mark, but students and teachers can share any type of file within the app. So it could be any format at all. And we also have options within the app for grouping students. So you can set up groups in advance um, and Sylvie will talk a little bit about um, supporting different groups of students through the app um, in our examples. But you can see here, if I've set them up previously, I've got here two groups that I've set up, uh, high achievers and native speakers. And I could pick an assignment and only have it go to a specific student or group of students. So our assignments will go through and it tops up for you who's received it, who's sent it back to you. Um, we've got lots of tools in the marking that we'll go through in terms of more detail later in the app when we look at assignments specifically. Any marks that you give a piece of work come back to a mark sheet and everything is gathered centrally. So you don't have to input any grades unless it's a piece of work that isn't submitted through the app. Um, and we also track how far students are along with each piece of work. And again, we'll look at that later in this evening's webinar. Um, Sylvie's going to talk a lot about topics. We were aware that it is quite difficult, even with really capable students, to get them to find the right thing in the right place at the right time. And so we're trying to make sure that pieces of information that you share with students don't get lost in the kind of long list of things as you're using a workflow tool. Um, so we put everything that's relevant for a particular subject in a particular place and you decide those topics and what you share in them, all different types of files and so on. So we'll look at that in more detail. Um, and then finally, I'll just go back to the top, which is chat. And we've got a chat um, that goes between the whole class. You can make group chats like this one that we're in now. And you also have one-to-one -one chats with each student. Um, and again, I think we'll talk about it in a bit more detail, but a couple of things that are obviously hugely important for teachers. Everything is controllable by the teacher. So every chat has a teacher in it. 
um, students can't have private messages, they can't edit or delete their messages, um, and you can stop them from being able to contribute just with a tap of a button. Um, and you can hide messages if they do write anything they shouldn't. So lots of controls in there to make sure it's all a safe space for teachers and students. And then towards the end of the webinar, I will show you our kind of latest feature, which allows teachers and students to actually be able to see each other for video calling um, for remote learning. So very quick tour there. I'm gonna switch back to the slides. And Sylvie, you're going to now take over and tell us a bit more um, about your use of Spark Jar. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. So a little bit about myself. So I'm head of department uh, of MFL in a school in Surrey. And we started our journey with um, iPads four years ago. So I'm a digital lead at the school and we embarked uh, with Spark Jar. So we started three years ago with Spark Jar and um, we have been working uh, closely with them and uh, have uh, used Spark Jar intensively through lockdown. And that's been a godsend for us and has um, made our life a lot easier. So um, what I would like to um, do now is simply to uh, run through what uh, we are going to do in this session. And I will focus on uh, topics uh, to start with and on the kind of activities that we have uh, been doing um, in the school with minimum planning that we have found very useful. We look also at uh, the whiteboard function which I've used immensely um, you know, since it appeared on Spark Jar uh, for very quick uh, activities and how we can model things uh, using uh, whiteboards um, and mirroring uh, children's uh, work as well. How we use the chat, grouping and assignment as well. And please feel free to ask questions as I go along. So topics um, is uh, the function that uh, we liked the most um, in, in our school. And it allowed us to organize all our topics in topic folders um, and to make things visible or not to students as we taught at the push of a button. So within topics, you can, um, you know, uh, put starter activities um, ahead of the time and those or settling in activities or um, you know any kind of thing like that and you can push them onto the children's iPad before you turn up to class. So for me that has been um, highly important so when I arrive in the classroom I know that the children are focused on the activity that has been set and they're getting on with some work and it allows me to settle down to plug in my um, you know, a keyboard if I need to use it or to do a register, um, just to uh, breathe in a little bit when I've been changing classrooms so often as I have today. So, you know, so um, like many of you, we change classrooms up to 10 times a day and uh, having that facility at the push of a button is amazing. So they know that they go within the topic that they're working on and they will have an activity, a starter activity there uh, that will come out. And uh, it has simply made our life a, a little easier. So I will share some of the activities that are very simple. Um, they take no time to, to create. Um, and I have kept them very uh, simple, relevant. Um, and I've also created a, a whiteboard folder for children to work independently um, um, you know, on whiteboards if they wish to do so, which they seem to enjoy um, hugely. So if we go to the um, one of the first, uh, okay, so you can see here um, some of my topics in year 11. So they can refer back to topics as well from the previous years, from year 10. 
but um, this is where I was uh, a few weeks back and now we have uh, exam practices as well as topics but they have folders such as reading um, comprehension folder we worked on the theme of la pauvreté le bénévolat so um, a lot of documents were put into these they have independent work that uh, they can do and challenging activities uh, as well in the folder below and the five a day is our starter folder um, and then you can see the whiteboard one they also have past papers um, and listening a listening folder on which um, they can retrieve transcript from this is language which is uh, a site that we subscribe to for them to practice um, the listing or exam pro uh, papers as well or booklets. So all of those folders are there available for them and I make things available, visible to them as, um, as I go along. Um, so if I go to a younger class, so as I said, most of our, oh, you can see uh, what's inside the folders here. Okay, so that's a reading comprehension one. This was the one on La Pauvreté. So this is some work we did on whiteboards. So I leave them there for them to uh, go through, but some of the work that wasn't relevant, I didn't make visible again to them. This is uh, another folder with narrow reading grammar tasks. Um, and then um, the, the whiteboard one, uh, just asking them to translate things very quickly at the start of the lesson. Um, these are the transcripts I was talking about and past papers as well. You can see the grammar section there and then little translations we do on whiteboard as quick starters when we've covered um, a, a grammatical point. So that's uh, really quite useful for them. And I work on those. I model things um, within those whiteboards, uh, which, which they really enjoy. And they can annotate the whiteboards as they go along. So the mouse seam are there. Um, they also have model answers for essays that we worked on. And uh, at the time we had the general conversation booklet uh, from year 10 that was there um, uh, for them to, to work through. And um, they've got something else at the moment because of the new uh, criteria that we do have. So most of the um, settling in practices that um, I, I have as starters are retrieval practices. And as you have seen on the year 11, often I use a whiteboard and I may write a few sentences that they need to translate. Uh, and that takes seconds for me to do. And then, you know, um, they can just uh, get on with that um, while I'll, 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 I'll get on with something else basically. But um, creating a whiteboard folder is uh, something that they've enjoyed because they can work in pairs through activities. They can do some um, uh, vocabulary retrieval practice uh, from their uh, topic folder and test one another uh, on their whiteboard. Um, on their iPads and then they could um, simply take a photo of that and share it through the chat or I could they I could ask them to mirror it to the board so I don't need to move around the classroom at all when those activities are taking place. Um, so if you go to the next uh, slide please. That's perfect, thank you. So this is something that I saw on Twitter before, and this is one of those settling in activities I was talking about that um, I have in one of the topic folders. And they just simply complete it, um, and then I may uh, decide to mirror it, and then we go through it together. So it's giving them the, the frame to work through a translation on something that we covered early on uh, in the term. And um, they really get into the habit of uh, doing that kind of activities. So, um, it enables uh, them to arrive in class knowing that, you know, before we start the work that we're doing, we are going to retrieve the work that has been covered and having children that have missed lessons or may have been in classes uh, through uh, spark draw when they've been absent. There's a live uh, video um, a function that Catherine will show you, um, it, it just enables them to settle down and get on with that. And they know that it's done in an organized fashion. So they can always go back into their topic folder and retrieve that work if they haven't been there. 
and they get on with it uh, at their own pace um, and they may work in pairs through it um, and you know that works extremely well they can peer assess it they can self-assess it if i want to put the answers uh, down for them on another um, whiteboard for them to retrieve it from. Um, I may also ask them to uh, submit uh, the corrected version uh, through the one-to-one -one chat. I may ask them to then do it in their exercise book, but everything is done in that manner. So I do not collect exercise books at all. The work is done in the exercise book sometimes and quite often actually, um, but they self-mark it. Um, you know they self-assess their own work uh, within that so that was a, a, a quite a nice um, activity for uh, them to do i'm really sorry i'm struggling to speak english today um, i do apologize for that the uh, next activity um, is an example of a retrieval activity that they did uh, in pair against uh, the clock oh is that another slide okay that's showing you some of the starters yes so when I'm going through them, when I'm correcting them, you know, I will write, I will record it, for example, as I did here. Um, so students who are absent, who are not in the lesson, can go through the work with us at the same time and they can see what the corrections are. Through the chat, they can let me know how they feel about it if they don't understand something. So there was something about the mont and ma, um, which was a uh, um, an issue you know with quite a few thank you laura with quite a few students uh, in year seven so that worked extremely well um, that way so this is a retrieval activity which they did in pairs against the clock so again that was in one uh, of our topic folders and um you know uh, i used the drawing of one of uh, uh, the students we we did that uh, for um, amboni and long tress um, and then what they did is one of the students, when I came into the class, they were reading it to their partner and their partner was translating the sentence to them. So that was done in speaking at the beginning of the lesson. Then they could simply take pen to paper and do it uh, by themselves. And then they could go to the English, translate the English into French. And then they could simply uh, read what is in English there into French and then the partner has to find which sentence it is that they are reading. So they can take it at so many different um, levels. But you can see here how engaged they were uh, without me being in the classroom. So that worked extremely well. And I could trust them to get on with it. I mean, obviously, at times we use um, other starters. We, we do some work with Quizlet, and they have the link um, for Quizlet within their topic. They just click on it. Um, and then they get on with it um, at the same time. But um, I don't trust them as much as they tend to do the matching activities on Quizlet, as this is quite a good activity for them to do, and then put pen to paper the following lesson. That can be used and reused um, regularly. And then, you know, as at the moment, uh, we go back to starters and settling in activities activities we did at the start of the term and they go over their work they have done but they do it pen to paper um, at the start of the lesson so i tend to give them the instructions um, you know or in the chat or um, they know what they need to do they need to go to the first starter activities that's there and and they get on with it um, so so as many of you will know, um, you know, we, we tend to use uh, sentence builders and trapdoors, and, and a lot of you will be using them as well uh, to, to write uh, extended sentences or um, to use as translation for translations as well. So this is again something, um, if there is clarity of instructions and they know what they are expected uh, to do, then um, they just get on with it. So if they play a, a trapdoor game, again, it will be in speaking and they will, I, I think you all know how to use trapdoor. If you don't, I'll just briefly uh, go through it, but they will start their sentence with um, the first box. And then uh, if uh, that word is correct, they will continue to the next box. And if that's correct, they move on to the next one. If not, they have to go back to the beginning. Um, so, you know, a, a trapdoor frame can be used in so many different ways, and it can be limited to um, 
them using three boxes or um, they can use um, you know, more of these, or they could use um, that uh, structure to write extensive sentences starting in En ce moment, je regarde les émissions de télé-réalité, je trouve que c'est fantastique. Um, and then they could maybe extend further uh, by saying quelquefois je lis des livres de science-fiction and then you know they could extend again with a, um, a viewpoint if they an opinion if they wish to do that so these can be used in so many different ways they could um, write a sentence and then um, their partner could uh, translate it and to do that they could uh, do it in the exercise book take a photo of it and uh, I use grouping within the um, chat um, and then they put it on the group that they are allocated to and then the partner will translate it in their book and then they can keep swapping like that and that works very well. They don't need to only work with the person they're sitting next to, which is what we you know, have had to do. They can't move in a the classroom, they are located seat and they're always sitting next to the same person. So, um, you know, trapdoor and sentence builders have been um, really useful for starters in many, many ways. Uh, for retrieval practice, um, I quite like Kate Jones's uh, book, Retrieval Practice, um, and also ideas from her blog. Um, so these are a few ideas that, um, you know, that she came up uh, with. Um, so simply as a starter, a list of vocabulary on their whiteboard uh, from uh, the last lesson, um, asking a question in French about the topic that they are studying this term. Um, they could explain a grammatical point. Uh, today, my year nine, where I asked them to explain the, the why, you know, there. And uh, when I came into class, they were drawing on their whiteboard, explaining it to one another. Um, they could uh, write a sentence in French using key vocabulary from last week's lesson and tell uh, their partner uh, one thing that they learned from last lesson. So just keeping it to that level. Now today with year seven, we did a, a, a massive retrieval activity where um, they had to go back to the first week of term. So the first week of term, they were doing greetings and um, they were uh, asking one another how they felt. And then they were talking about the days of the week. Then they had school subjects and we went on weeks after weeks and they were doing that, just going back through all the settling in activities that they had done testing one another. And obviously the vocabulary is within those topics. They also have it in the exercise book, but we have gone away from photocopying because we've got to quarantine um, everything. So having it uh, neatly stored in the topics means that they can annotate it as well uh, within uh, the topic, um, um, but it means that they can really become quite independent in, in their learning as well and uh, see what they need to revise. So I was very impressed um, by that um, in that form. Okay, so um, we also tend to set, I mean, this is from uh, Kerr Boudol from, from our textbook. Um, so vocabulary um, learning is set as, as homework and, and revised by a Kerr Boudol and Quizlet. Um, but with uh, year 10 and 11, we do five minute systematic uh, revisiting of uh, the vocabulary um, that has been covered. So we go from, you know, three weeks ago, nine weeks ago, um, and, uh, you know, what they're, what they're doing at the moment, three weeks ago, nine weeks ago, um, and uh, lots of very simple tasks uh, from templates. Um, and, and, and we go through um, you know, very short tests at the beginning of the lesson that are often translations. So again, you know, um, very uh, short translations written in different time frames. quite often um, it's just to familiarize themselves to um, um, that kind of process of not forgetting that you've got to focus on the verbs as well. 
um, uh, French to English or English into French using that vocabulary. But again, very minimum preparation, um, or they could simply do self-quizzing. So, um, you know, they have a list of vocabulary and they go from the English into the French and then back into uh, the English and back again into the French. Um, that's something that they're quite used to do um, in those year groups. Um, so that's, that's a very quick uh, self-quizzing um, thing that they can do for the fan method. Um, so here is an example. So brew is uh, things that they did, uh, for example, at the beginning of term. Um, you know, um, so you've got, sorry, blue is from the last topic, sorry. And then what they did um, three weeks ago would be in another color. And when I uh, did that slide, um, it was, we, we didn't have enough week <laughs> to go back to nine weeks, which, which we do now. Um, and, and that has worked extremely well. And I was highly surprised by how much they did remember um, because we were doing, you know, um, um, some revision on relationship with family members, um, which was quite nice. So if you want to look more into that, Rachel, Rachel Hawkes um, has a lot of activities um, and uh, a website is, is full of ideas that you, you, you can use as well in Spanish and in French. Um, and not being able to move around uh, the class, um, you know, has been something I was a little worried about. So to keep the pace and to monitor the progress using topics has enabled me to, to do that because they do the work and I project it on the board um, thank you, Joe. Um, and uh, it, it really has been quite uh, effective um, and, and has worked very well with minimum planning because I can reuse and recycle things as I did with the vocabulary from Kerbudol, for example. So um, yes, so I, I you know I talk about minimum planning and I do use textbooks in year 10 and 11. I don't use textbooks in um, at key stage three, but in year 10 and uh, 11. Um, oh, Catherine, are you coming in here? Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, all right. Sorry. So I'm talking. And, um, no, that's okay. I, I didn't want to stop your flow. And I'm sorry if I didn't have the right slides at the right minute there, Sylvie. That was, uh, I was. Sorry trying to work out which bits which. Okay, so we'll just switch back to the app. Um, so what I'm gonna share with you now is looking at our annotation tools um, and how um, we saw there, Sylvia was talking about using whiteboards um, and recording what she's done. So I'll just show you how that works. So from topics, um, so I've got a topic here for science, my subject. Um, and uh, let's say that I, um, want to use a whiteboard with students, I just add a whiteboard to the topic. Um, this little I here means it's not currently visible and you can just quickly make them visible and you can hide them again if you want to. Um, in all through the app, anywhere that you can annotate, you get this same toolbar at the top of the screen. So we have pens, highlighters, and they're completely adaptable. So they can be any color, any width, any opacity that you want them to be. Um, you can add little text notes and you'll see there we've got all the recent comments that I've made are all stored so I can reuse them. And the same with voice notes. So obviously for languages, what would be particularly powerful there is being able to do pronunciations of keywords for students to help them with that as they go along. Um, but yes, as Sylvia was saying, you can just annotate, you can write words as you go um, and you can record this. So if I wanted the class to see this, um, I think one of the things that I found challenging about being in a classroom with your students, but also having some at home is anything that you do within the classroom normally, you've got to figure out a way to show that with students through video so that they can follow along um, remotely. So this kind of thing, instead of using the whiteboard at the front of the room, you can open a whiteboard in the app and then pressing present, presents it to the whole class. Um, if I needed to, if I wasn't, say I was working remotely with some students, I could start a video call with them as well to make sure they could see me talking it through. Um, but by pressing present, what that does is then it beams it to all the students' um, screens. So that way they can then see 
what you're doing at exactly the same time and you don't have to worry about them finding the right file to open and look at the at that particular point you're basically controlling their screens for them um, so that everybody looks at the same thing at the same time and they see your annotations update live so we'll just stop that and come out um, but it might also be that you do that with a, with some slides that you're using so you might annotate a picture or a PDF that you've update, uploaded. So here's an example where I wrote on this and recorded what I was doing at the same time. And what I'm just going to do, uh, I won't play the sound, but you can see the button at the top here has record. It won't let me record while I share screen with you right now. Um, but if I come out, you can, I'll do a little blue Peter moment and have his one I made earlier. So if I just press play on this, you can see my face appears. Um, so teacher doesn't have to be present, uh, but it doesn't have to be visible. So we saw Sylvie's one where it was just the annotations, but you can be visible and you can be talking at the same time. Um, just excuse, I've, I'm using a way of sharing my screen that means that I can show you my face on this later. So sometimes the little menu bar comes up there. Um, but you can see as I annotate and explain, it's all recorded. And if I do a record at the same time, then students come back can come back to that again and again and, and view it as needed um, as uh, you know as they're working on a particular topic as they need to review it um, as they go along so that's our sort of annotation tools and recording and presenting um, resources for students which uh, Sylvie has talked a little about and I think we'll continue talking about um, in this next section I'll just share that back for you Sylvie Thank you. So yes, yeah, so I, I have a student that has isolated uh, since March, so she hasn't been in the classroom. And that's one of the tools I used in all my year 11 uh, classes. Um, and uh, at the start, it was quite tricky for me to uh, think about ways to, uh, you know, get her back in the classroom. And that worked extremely well for her. She, she loves it. So um, that uh, way of recording with minimum planning, not having to uh, create, uh, uh, to think very hard about creating a, um, a PowerPoint and voiceover, but to do it in the class and, and to have that interaction um, has been highly successful while, te while teaching the rest of the class. So um, I'm just going to show you a, a few examples of how um, it is done. And, and we all do that. We, we you know, as language teachers, um, you know, um, we, we want to really sit and practice new vocabulary uh, in the target language with students. So for example, with a text like this, um, they simply highlight um, the new language, um, you know, from the exercise that is set. Um, they can annotate uh, the text directly within uh, the app. And uh, it can be used as a pre-listening task. And, you know, you could follow that by a narrow listening activity, uh, students listening to short interviews of two minutes uh, with the same pool of words, for example, and that will recycle those words, um, even if the text has uh, different meanings, it can be highly powerful. Or you can simply uh, read the text out uh, uh, to them and they, they annotate it, you know, with that key language, just to immerse them into, um, in, into French by, by doing that or into the target language that you are uh, using. So on, on the next slide, you can see the kind of annotation that's taking place. And then they can go back and uh, they can rewrite that language within their language organizers to, to revise from. And maybe the next activity could be a translation on whiteboard um, that they will do um, where I would uh, dictate uh, the words so they will listen to me dictating or they can do it as a starter without me uh, yet in the classroom as the facility to record on whiteboard is there um, so they will get on with it and write those words uh, down so uh, again that can be um, done fairly straightforwardly or you could do a quick dictation uh, that way um, that's um, so um, the next activity was um, just using a, a transcript. I just changed a few words and I did a very quick listing uh, comprehension 
uh, practice and then I made it visible um, and uh, they had to answer uh, five questions on you know about that listening and then they had to look at keywords so you are working at the same time uh, on you know and, and and they are annotating it I can't see the annotations they see mine but I cannot see there so they can go back to it and it is within their topic folder um, for them to to retrieve the language that has been covered within that topic but again I don't need to write a transcript I can use that not make it visible the first time round and asking them to focus on certain elements answer specific questions and then I read it out, um, they do that, and then I make it visible and they can work through um, that transcript and extract key language. Uh, and, um, you know, you can take it uh, where you wish that way. So, within um, the uh, topics, I have a uh, a folder called independent work and um, I want the student just to gain independence in their way uh, of working just to get on with things with activities so often it's narrow reading activity that are in the reading folder that they will do at the start of the lesson so in year 11 they know that they need to refer to those two folders or go straight away into this is language and get on with the activity that has been emailed to them and then retrieve the language um, that has been covered from the transcripts that are within the folder in a spa jar. So um, that again has been highly uh, useful. And then I can choose to mark their work um, on assignment or they put it on the chat, uh, on a one-to-one -one chat. I can see what has been done, uh, the mistakes that have been made, and then uh, maybe the following lesson as a starter, I will go over that work with them uh, as a class activity. Uh, or if it is an assignment that I have set, I will mark it uh, within Spark Jar and, and feedback will be uh, given. Um, but they can just get on with the marking themselves with the transcripts. And uh, you know, going uh, through this as a, as a class has been highly effective um, with the year 11. It has worked very well. Um, something I'd like to mention, which, oh, okay, so you've got here, oh, yeah, 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 that's fine, the listening comprehension. So these are some examples um, from uh, the younger year groups. Um, so that's year nine when they spoke about family getting on with people. So you've got the transcript and then you have the actual uh, listening activity that uh, they can do here. So I do the same with listening comprehensions um, that are not from this is language that are just from other platforms or uh, simply from example that I may put into that for them to work through and the beauty of that is that uh, when they are in year 11 they can go back to their uh, topics from year 10 to revise so um, I don't know for you but I have a few students that tend to lose things um, so I have you know they've got everything within their topics to go back to revise from and they have their own whiteboards which they have created as well to do so. So um, if you go to the next slide, please. So whiteboards for me um, has been the, the, the major thing with um, uh, Spark Jar and I use them extensively um, in every class in so many different ways. So today with my year nine, um, they were working through a translation uh, from uh, French into English, where they had time phrases and um, they had verbs in different tenses there, but they also had the means of transport and they really had to focus on uh, little words, you know, um, just uh, quantifiers or uh, simply um, adverbs adding a specific element to the sentence or the negative form. And uh, what is fantastic is, um, so if you go to uh, the next slide, you will, uh, you will see that you can annotate it, but you can also highlight things for them to uh, spot. 
So um, the, the kind of activity you've got here as a started translating to English, you know, was fo focusing on that kind of adverbs for them to, to translate. And then they had to translate the actual uh, adjectives. So this is, you know, this was with um, year um, eight. And then uh, year, year, you, you know, with the spelling, I'll do simply something where uh, each letter is um, a dash, which uh, year seven uh, absolutely love. And uh, the spelling has improved immensely from doing that. It's quite a simple thing um, to do, but it focuses them. If you just do the first um, uh, letter of each word, they work very well through that. So this is not a, a year seven class by all means, but it's just to show you how versatile the whiteboards can be with the kind of activities um, that you, you, you wish to do with that. Uh, with year seven, I use them for phonics. So I recall certain um, words and they just have to complete the word with the sound that they hear. Uh, that's what we focused on at the beginning of the school year, uh, you know, working on colors and days of the week, that kind of thing. Um, and then the next uh, whiteboard that you see here, the third one, is uh, focusing on uh, really making sure that each element is translated correctly and word order as well. So I use them as well as a mixed translation, but it enables me to cover points that have not been mastered um, during the lesson. So, um, you know, at any time, I'll just uh, use a whiteboard, project it on the board, uh, or simply if I'm not, if I have other children that are not in the class, I make it visible to all and I record and I work through uh, whatever activity that we are doing. So, um, you know, today in each of my lesson, um, whiteboards were used in uh, different manners. So, uh, for example, we had a feedback on a piece of writing with your 11 or 150 words, how to rephrase um, the, the question, um, you know, and, and we worked uh, simply on, on rephrasing questions, different way of doing that, extending uh, them as we went along and the students were annotating the answer. So um, by the end of it, they had uh, um, quite complex sentences written um, uh, on their whiteboard, uh, annotated in all directions, and then they had to write it neatly in the exercise book. So it takes away a little bit of that fear that they may have when they work directly in the exercise book and you collaborate um, together on them that way. Um, so you can do quick listening activities with them, simply um, you know, stating birthday dates, for example, with year seven, um, that's something that um, they've enjoyed doing as well. And then they can do dictations themselves to one another. Uh, one of them can have uh, the language from a trapdoor activity uh, within their um, folder, um, topic folder, and then the other student will write it on their whiteboard. So, you know, lots of versatility. But um, the next slide shows you um, when we worked uh, as a class, we were working on descriptions and often I see that they make mistakes. So um, as a class, I modeled, um, you know, the descriptions that we were working um, uh, on and we stressed the verbs that were used when we were describing people, because that's something that often is an issue. And we worked with that description together. Um, stressing the verbs, um, highlighting them, uh, looking at adjectives, at agreements, um, you know, how can we extend that further, what happens to, agree to, to adjectives, um, you know, and, and by doing that as a model, then they had to do their own um, description using a bitmoji of someone in the class or their own bitmoji, and then they did it in Book Creator, and then they submitted that um, as an assignment once they had done the recording. So that was quite a, a, a successful activity for them to do because within Book Creator, they also have a readme function, which will read to them in whatever language they've set it um, on. So in this case, it was French, then they will practice uh, their reading, then they will record themselves reading it, then they will um, you know, submit uh, their book as a, a video, 
and uh, the recording is embedded in that uh, and they, that would be uh, that was one of the little assessment that they had to do um, and um, you know it's an assignment that I marked and then I fed back um, in speaking to them so the corrections were made and the pronunciation was improved and the spelling um, you know um, was improved from the activity done on the whiteboard as you can see here. Um, so that's uh, and also we use teachers from from our you know our school. So for example, uh, the gentleman you see there, Mr. Kerr, is an IT um, is our IT man. So we used him um, and and we use different teachers. So we describe different teachers. So ask them to submit their Bitmoji. Um, and the idea of using a Bitmoji. I mean, Joe was you know at the start of that um, very much so. Um, when it happened on Twitter. So um, I think it was possibly uh, not this, um, not in March, but earlier than that, uh, he created a table of a few people uh, from Twitter uh, and their Bitmoji. And using that, then the next lesson, we uh, played uh, Guess Who as a class and they played in pairs. I modeled it as a class and then they played in pair and they really liked that. And then um, I did one which they had to, I, I gathered teachers from the school and they had to write descriptions um, um, using their Bitmoji, which made it a little bit more interesting. They love it. Um, yeah, they really enjoy that. So um, you can see a few of yourself possibly in those, you know, um, and, and it was highly successful because they could annotate it within the uh, topic. So they could circle the people, cross the people that were there, and make note of the people who were there and so on. And they had support at the same time there um, if it was needed. So a, a very a successful activity that, um, and, and even now when they revise today all um, the topics that they had covered that came up and they were very keen um, to describe people and one of the reasons they, they remember um, the, the color of hair is because of that activity so that was um, um, very successful and quite complex in a way for year seven writing quite extensive sentences but also I was able to assess their speaking um, which is something that uh, in the first lockdown uh, I, I really thought we would struggle with and in fact we didn't because the um, uh, they were able to record themselves uh, for assignments using my talking avatar, using Book Creator, uh, using uh, Voice Record Pro and submit that. And I was able to feed back um, on SparkJar in speaking um, and for them to improve on their pronunciation. So we did a lot of phonics work uh, during lockdown and uh, that um, has improved uh, their, their pronunciation, the year seven are doing quite well. Um, so um, if we, yeah, so you're talking about that now, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I am going to just take us a little bit further on our tour. We're going to get chat groupings and assignments. Um, and I'm just going to start with the groupings. So um, in our sort of brief context, little background at the beginning, I showed that we have these groupings. Um, essentially, this is just a way for teachers to set up groups that students aren't, they aren't aware of what group you might have put them into. Um, other than when you're in a chat, you give that chat a name but elsewhere in the app, they don't know these groupings. So it can be about their heart, their prior attainment. It could be um, in the state sector if they are pupil premium. Um, it could be as um, Sylvie will look at it, if they're a native speaker and they maybe uh, need to be pushed a little bit further with what they're doing. Um, you can set up the group and you can decide who's in that group really easily, really quickly, put students in, put students, take students out, et cetera. Um, once you're in any aspect of the app, so for instance, in the chat, when you make a new chat room, you've got the option of using one of those groups that you previously have set up, or what's useful really at the moment is making this a chat room. Um, and I apologize for looking away. I, I'm looking, I've got my iPad set up to the side here. So um, I'm just going between the two, 
at the moment, obviously, we've got students who, you know, some uh, are isolating or maybe they are off um, ill or, um, you know, for whatever reason, they're shielding, etc. They're not with us in the classroom so we can make a quick group with the absentees um, and that means that anything you do that you want them to work on together they do in that particular chat room or as Sylvia said she does this to allow group work to happen within the classroom even though they can't move around they can still work together on things within these little groups that we've set up um, as I said before, teacher is always present. So there's there's no like back channels where students can figure out sneaky ways of messaging each other without you being aware of it. Um, and all chats can be paused so you can stop students being able to talk at times when, when it's not appropriate for you um, to keep an eye on. Um, all messages, so if I go back to this one, um, so this is an example of sort of how you can do a starter with a class by posting something, getting them talking on the chat. Uh, during a session, um, all messages can be hidden. So we can see firstly who's seen it and when, but also we can hide it. So if it was something inappropriate, it disappears from students, but in terms of safeguarding and follow-up and consequences that might need to be put in place, we can still see it, it's still there. There's a, a full sort of chain of being able to, to track that. So nothing basically can disappear, which is really important when it comes to safeguarding. Um, if we just move from there to assignments. So I showed you before, uh, very briefly, it's very straightforward to set up an assignment. Um, and then the app does all the hard work in terms of chasing students for that work. It appears if I switch to the student briefly. So if we go and be Kathy and look at her assignment page, you can see her work and it's color coded. So work that's been sent back to her marked is um, blue. Um, or green, depending on whether she's looked at the feedback, she then sees the bit of work, can look at the feedback that the teacher's given. Um, we track whether it has been read fully based on a, on a sort of basic word count of reading, a reading um, speed. Um, and the same with voice notes, whether they've been listened to. Um, we do all of that tracking in the app. So there's no having to sort of say to who has or hasn't and tick people off on a, on a sheet or anything. It's all sorted in the app. If I just go back to the teacher's view in the same assignments here, that's these ones, um, we can see that progress of who's returned it. And then I can see well, I've got three that haven't done it yet and some that I need to mark. Um, same annotation tools as we had before. So if I just use my pencil, we can do normal handwritten annotations, highlighting. Um, and then these text tools and voice note tools. So um, what we want to do is allow teachers to give really personalized feedback and high quality feedback but obviously that could take a long time and the reality is um, certainly from a science perspective students often make similar mistakes they have misconceptions they often um, are, are need the same kind of feedback so in terms of you know the, the work involved in either rewriting the same comment again and again in books or copying and pasting the text from somewhere or from a clipboard or into the notes that you want to give all of that takes time and although it might feel faster to be doing it digitally it's still repetition that actually tech can get rid of so say for instance here it's not really relevant to this piece of work but this is a mark scheme for an exam question and if I want to reuse that I can edit it if I need to. So if I do want to personalize it with a student's name, I can quickly type that in, but I can just reuse that comment really quickly. And so across a set of work where students need similar feedback or marking a test like this, um, with this example for the marking there rather than the piece of work, um, it's much, much faster because I can reuse that. And uh, the same with voice notes so really lovely for students um you know even it's just a bit of praise just to get a short piece of verbal feedback is really nice um and the same thing again the app this little transcription here is um something that apple will do it's not shown to the student they can't see it um sometimes it gets a good transcription sometimes it doesn't understand what you said but it gives you an idea of what it was and then you can play it back so you can check is this the comment i want to leave um, and then you say yeah that's great um i want to that's relevant to this piece of work is the feedback i want to give this student 
we can set up marking so that it follows the school's um, way of doing things or we've got like really simple recognition markings so really nice you can give them smiley face or even smiley star face um, I've no idea if anyone actually does it I've not necessarily seen a sad face uh, being used but maybe there are some teachers out there who would do that um, the other thing that we do that to try and save time for teachers is allow them to ask students to resubmit and so this handles all of that workflow again for you rather than having to reset a task you basically pick a new due date where you want students to have submitted it by and then when you send it back to them it gives them their feedback it shows them you know what you've said how they need to improve the piece of work and then it sets a new assignment with a new due date and they are then have that on their to-do list to send back to you with their improved piece of work um, and then when you look at that piece of work you can see that history um, in our mark book so if I just move that if I return that now in the mark book whenever we look at a piece of work like this and we look at this completion we can go back and we can see there were previous pieces of work chase work we can also go through if I just look at the piece of work if there was a previous version which I don't think let me do a different one uh, maybe Tom no Pavel I should have checked which ones were the specific ones where I've resubmitted previously basically we'd be able to look at the previous versions of that piece of work so we could compare the improvements done and it's all done there for you and chased up for you okay I will switch back now to Sylvie yeah, this is really, really good for the task on pieces of writing. So for 150 words, for example, in French, um, you know, if you ask them to resubmit, so you can tell them which band uh, they need to work um, on, or which, you know, what they need to do to improve, they do it and they resubmit. And it's lovely to, to see um, that's very, um, that works extremely well, actually. I mean, one thing I quite like uh, to do is to use the, the chat, in fact, um, a, a lot, because assignments can be a, a little stressful, you know, if it pings and they get another assignment. So I tend to ask them to, to do uh, specific things. I mark the assignment and then I said to them, how could you extend using the feedback given, you know, uh, make sure that you work uh, in the band above. And uh, so I tailor the feedback um, in the first assignment, then they put it on the one to one chat. And, and that way, um, it's, it's, it's a little bit uh, more friendly for them, uh, less stressful and less uh, threatening than having to resubmit uh, uh, quite often. And um, this is an example in, in my school of one of my colleague in, in um, Spanish using the anti-class chat and in a class with a student uh, asking them to to you know adjust their work and uh, to use alternatives in their writing so that works extremely well as a teacher we can um, annotate uh, they work on the one-to-one -one chat or on the chat generally and again if you want to work with one child in particular on something that they haven't mastered in class when others are working on something else you just ping a whiteboard and um, you, you can do that on a one-to-one -one, or you can ask them to put their work on the one-to-one -one chat, have a look at it and you know um, tell them how to improve on it without it being um, within the assignment. So that's really lovely. If you want to model something, you can do that. You can record it as well if you wish to do so. Um, for the entire class or for one student in particular. So lots of flexibility within the chat, which I, I found um, highly uh, useful and uh, enabled me to, to work with students on a one-to-one. -one. Also quite often, if I want them to self-assess a test, um, I will ask them to submit a picture of the test before they mark it on the one-to-one -one, uh, chat. And then um, they submit their uh, self-marked one as an assignment. And then I can really see um, that uh, they improve a lot more in their marking when um, that's the case. So um, that's another way of mon monitoring uh, the work, you know, for very quick uh, tests that you may not need um, to mark. 
So as assignment goes, um, I think Catherine, you've covered uh, you know, quite a lot uh, there. And, and what I wanted to mention, the, the feedback, um, especially during lockdown, to let the children know how well they were doing or what they needed to, you know, to tailor. Um, I recorded my voice every time. Uh, just for very, very quick feedback. And then I had extended feedback that I, I wrote or I typed uh, within my um, assignment. Uh, but I certainly tried to always um, say something to them. Um, and they responded quite, quite well to that. So um, I just wanted to mention how uh, much flexibility there is in the assignment that you set. So with grammar learning, we've done quite a lot of flipped lessons. Uh, with specific tasks. So we give them links, for example, or we give them um, with the grammar. The grammar videos on this is language are very good. So there's exercises that they can do uh, there. And then um, they can just, uh, when they come into class, they will teach uh, the lesson to, to one another. And um, that way, it, it was quite effective to see how they worked. And, and we could see that, you know, they took pictures of their work. And in this case, this is my colleague. So the little picture you have, if you clicked on it, you would have a comment coming out. Um, and uh, that, that worked extremely well. So just to um, go through a few uh, ideas. Um, also, um, with the next slide, please, Catherine. Yes, so in uh, one of our year groups, we have a student uh, who is a native speaker in year nine. So he's starting to do, because he's going to do Spanish um, in the future. So he's starting to do GCSE written papers. So it shows you that you can set assignments to pupils at uh, one level and to the rest of the class. Um, you know, um, they can get on with, with something else. So that differentiation is uh, very useful um, to do. And, and also uh, the fact that you can uh, um, add all kinds of documents to uh, the uh, assessment and the students can submit all kinds of documents as well. So um, depending on what you wish, it could be a PDF, it could be a film, it could be a recording, um, it can be um, anything and, and everything and it's your choice. Um, you know, uh, for you to set it as something that they submit, or you can mark something if you want to collect exercise books, then you, and you know, and quarantine, then you could mark it in exercise book. We've just done some paper tests uh, with um, all our year groups. And um, so, um, you know, I, I marked those, but I've put the marks in within the assignment. Um, so I have them within the mark uh, book in Spark um, so the type of submissions, so as I said, PDF photos, you could have any kind of extracts, films, recordings, um, which is, um, you know, very useful for languages. And uh, the, the flexibility of submission as well is, um, is huge. So I just wanted to uh, show you a little clip uh, now that was done by a year eight uh, student uh, uh, of mine. They had to create um, a, a little film on Paris. We can't travel, so we had a virtual tour of a few places in Paris. Um, and then they did exactly what I mentioned with year seven with a book creator. And this is quite a weak student that did that. And I did share it on Twitter because I was extremely proud of him for many, many reasons. So um, this is the little film that um, he did. It just takes one minute or so. Um, I'm just going to play it now, Sylvie. Just shout if the sound doesn't work. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the sound doesn't work. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> Joe warned me about this at the start. It doesn't matter too much. It's just. No, uh, no, we need to hear. There we go. Uh, and we'll just switch back. There we go. Lundi matter. Je suis à visiter la Tour Eiffel avec mon frère. Puis je suis allé la café avec ma famille. À midi, nous sommes allés déjeuner. Ce soir, nous sommes allés au restaurant. Mardi après-midi, ma famille et moi 
avant de visiter une musée à Somme à l'aide déjeuner. Dans le soir, je dînais. Mercredi, nous sommes allés à un marché et avons acheté des souvenirs. Jeudi, j'ai visité le Sacre-Cœur avec ma famille, puis nous sommes allés à la de Triomphe. Dans le soir, nous sommes allés dîner. Vendredi, nous sommes sortis de Paris sur Eurostar. Okay, so this is a, a student who um, used Book Creator and used clips and, uh, you know, did the listen to the, what he had written and uh, then recorded himself working on this pronunciation. There are quite a few mistakes, but, you know, and, and no opinions were, were expressed as such. But for um, not a high ability student, it's, it's highly rewarding, I think, uh, for them to be able to do that and to submit such a, a piece of work um, for, for me to mark and, and for them to look back at. So, um, um, yes, that's great that he does, Clips does that, and they, they love using Clips, um, and uh, sometimes they also use the uh, function where uh, you, you have the, the subtitles, so it's, it's, a, it's a lovely activity for them to do, they um, enjoy doing that, and it's a different piece of homework, so um, that's just something I wanted to share uh, uh, with you um, here. So um, what's important, what I've learned to do is to be quite clear in the way I label the assignment. Um, this is just showing you um, a task, you know, where the children, the student respond to a, a feedback um, and uh, they, they just get on with it and they do a dot task and then they take a photo of it and uh, submit it. So it's just to, to show you a few examples of, of the work um, that is done that way. And um, we, we, we've been taught to really monitor the progress that is happening and to pitch it up in our lessons. So I think SparkDRA has really uh, supported that. And um, so I check classwork regularly uh, that way. And I know that the exercise books are um, well kept, um, you know, and, and that children have enjoyed doing uh, draft copies of things on whiteboards and then doing them in the exercise books. Um, has enabled them to shine as well. So um, I, I check their work through the one-to-one -one chat and they, um, they do their uh, test often on post-its. We have different post-it colors in different classes and somehow they're on uh, assessment and feeling accountable uh, for their work has, has grown uh, through the use of a spark job because they know that they will check the work on the one-to-one -one chat i may check one or two pupils and then i'll check how they've marked it and how they fed back as well so um that kind of continuity has meant that across the department uh, we have seen um, spelling um, improved um, massively um, so uh, with my year 10 and 11 and 10 to ask them to um, do their written task in the classroom um, and uh, to avoid the use of Google Translate. And it enables me to scaffold on the support that I provide as well. So that has been quite successful. And I know that the last piece um, uh, of writing that they have done um, was so much better. I mean, I've learned from that uh, immensely. And uh, so they, they start at the beginning with support strips, you know, um, and then um, the scaffolding is there, key language is provided, and then we move on to a list of complex structures that I will give them, for example, for the 150 words, and then they choose them beforehand uh, for the next uh, stage, so they will have them in front of them, they do their piece of uh, writing and the last uh, test we have done all that is removed and they just get on with it and um, it, it has worked it has been very effective and all those things are within their 150 words folder so um, that scaffolding uh, is something they have done on each of the topics that we have covered um, and so they have the support you know strip then they have key structures that I would like them to use 
Um, so that's a mat and they can choose whichever one they want to use. They write them down in the exercise book. The next time they do it in class, they have them in front of them. And then uh, for the term you test, that is completely removed and there has been a huge improvement. So, um, you know, and, and they have a ticking um, whiteboard with uh, croissant, for example, for, um, you know, um, the students that want to use that. So they don't need to use it, but quite a few of them um, enjoy doing that. And for the 90 words, it's very simple. They have a ticking whiteboard as well. Um, on which they have to uh, answer the, the, you know, all the elements of the questions, uh, the use of three tenses, uh, opinions, justification, another verb form. So for example, my parents say, my sister thinks, that kind of thing. And, and they tick it as they go along um, and they get timed as well. So um, uh, the marking tools, um, Catherine spoke about, and I think, Frankly, um, you know, I just don't, uh, I, I, I reuse things. So um, I, I will reuse things when I mark um, 90 words and 150 words. I reuse elements of um, the, the marking uh, criteria. With uh, anything else that he's done, I will always uh, give a speaking comment, uh, very short, always. And uh, then um, I may record something if it needs to be modeled uh, for them to redo. And um, I really think very hard about the feedback that I give to the students. So um, I don't write something that's extensive, but I may do a whole class feedback if there's been a major issue. So the feedback is very short and to the point um, and they have to react to it and improve from it. So this is what, I have um, done with, uh, with them using um, that um, tool. Um, so, and, and on the next slide, you can see that the comments are, um, oh, is that this one? Can't. Oh yes, so how you can reuse comments here. Um, you know, so I will use, that, for example, for that kind of work that was done by the younger ones, um, and uh, I would reuse them. Because it's, it's often the same mistake with the younger students. And uh, the next slide was, um, yes, so again, um, you know, that's the way the comments are reused. I may rephrase them slightly. That's it for that, I think. And this is a, a fantastic tool for, I mean, we don't have parents evening as such at the moment, but even if you have, I've had virtual parents evening, which I found quite stressful, I have to say. So to be able to uh, look at my mark book to see uh, what the child had uh, submitted and uh, if they had rewards such as credits, um, you know, I, I can whiz through uh, their work by just clicking on my mark um, that has been um, highly uh, useful. Also, uh, to focus on the student, I can click on uh, their names and uh, the other students disappear. So I can really focus on that student when I am looking at my marking and uh, talking to a parent for five minutes before a bell goes. Uh, the work you know, uh, comes up and uh, my comments uh, do as well. So I can uh, really tailor my feedback, uh, especially for parents evening where you're talking about two classes. So um, it, it's quite uh, tiring uh, to do so. And, and that has been very, very useful. Um, so I think on that you will see, yes, so that uh, just focuses on one student. Um, which, which does help. And at for real parents evening, uh, you know, they won't see anyone else's mark. These are the rewards um, that were given. I don't use effort. Um, and this is the number of time the works has been submitted or late um, in some cases. Um, so I can click through that and look at it. So this is my year 11 this year. Um, that was uh, last term. Um, so highly useful and when I've returned it. So um, I can be very specific um, when I feed back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
That's great. Thank you, Sylvie. You're welcome. Um, okay, so I think the last thing to share with you, if I switch over, is to show you how we handle video calling. Um, so I'm just in a class chat, uh, which is what we've seen um, Sylvia was talking about with getting students working together. Um, and you can see here, I've got some previous video calls where obviously I've been testing things out. Um, we automatically log who was present in the call um, and all the calls, they are recorded um, privately for you that they could be recalled if needed. Um, but we don't, uh, there's no necessity for teachers to have to remember to, to press record or to have to log attendance um, as they go in a video call. Uh, so I'll just start and hopefully um, between the two things, I'm gonna just hope, I just hopefully won't make like loads of feedback because there's the potential there when you do a video call within a video call to deafen everybody. So I'm just gonna try not to do that to you. So live video call from the chat and you can see there um, all the things that you can add to a chat similar to topics. I'm gonna start the call, so hopefully, oh, there I am. I'm going to try and look between the two places now, so it's uh, slightly confusing. Um, so when I start the call, this is with this particular class. There we go, I, just, I could hear myself coming through then. Um, this is with this particular class, but I could... Oh, I can see it's frozen on your side. Hang on. Can I prompt that? Let's just turn it off again and try it again. There we go. Okay, um, so I'm gonna move that to the middle just so that it's a bit easier for me to see both at once. Um, so you can start this from your whole class, um, but it also could be from the one-to-one -one chat. It could be from uh, a group of like an absentees group that you've set up for that lesson. Um, I'm aware that you can't really see me here. It's because I'm trying to look in my iPad camera, which is slightly to the side. Um, I've got some controls. So obviously I've muted myself, but I can also mute the whole class so that there's no possibility of interruptions. On the student side, they can't talk unless they press and hold a button on their screen. And that means that only one student can talk at once. Um, and it means that also it avoids that kind of, um, you know, the intermittent interruptions that you might get as they're just kind of trying to speak at that particular point in time. They can raise a hand, which I'm just going to try, hopefully I can do to show you there. We can see that Kathy has put her hands up um, and they can also give a little thumbs up as well. So you could check understanding. We can see that I've only got Kathy present in the class. If Kathy was a real person in my lesson right now, we would see a tiny little video stream from her, which updates every two seconds. Um, and the idea there is that it doesn't require the bandwidth of having every single student's video all at once, but it allows you to at least get that feedback of a, a real person in real life moving as they're watching and listening your, to your lesson. Students are always organised in the same pattern. So it's a bit like looking out over your class and seeing your seating plan. It doesn't change. You can get used over time to who is where. And obviously for a whole class, they would go down in rows and you'd be able to see everybody in one place. Um, other things that you can do. So when I just take Kathy's hand down, let's just clear that. Um, when students put their, their little thumbs up, it will come through and if there was more than one student here it would come like a poll so i'd be able to check kind of say if i had asked a question and say right thumbs up if you understand then the number of students who understand at that particular point of time i'd be able to get a measure within the classroom of how well they were picking up on what we were doing um, and i think that's all we need to show right now, other than to show, for instance, um, we could use the whiteboard. And whatever I'm doing in the app, I can still present that to my class at the same time. And we're all looking at the same thing whilst we're in this call. I can move this around. I can minimise it so that it's not in the way while I'm talking to, through something. Um, and if there were students and they wanted to speak. So if I just um, um, can't be right now, press and hold, 
we see Cassie's face appear. So if it was a real class, I'll just turn that off because the feed's back. Um, if it was a real class with their, with their video, it would come up and we would see their video in the screen um, coming over mine. But it might also be just the avatar coming up. I'll just end that and come back to the end of our presentation. Um, so hopefully, um, I mean, Sylvie has given loads of great ideas. Um, and I particularly love the way that Sylvie, that you kind of scaffold, you build your students in terms of your tasks, you build them up as you go um, and allow them to achieve much more complex activities, but it's so carefully thought through all the time. I think wow. it's fantastic. Um, I just want to say a massive thank you to you for your time this evening. You've been at work all day um, and had a long, long day, it sounds like. Wow. And uh, to come and share those ideas with us, just brilliant. Um, but yeah, uh, as I said at the start, Sylvie is a great practitioner in terms of uh, in terms of languages, clearly, but also as someone who has kind of embraced technology and pushes the envelope in, in, in terms of what it can do um, and what she's working on with it um, in her classroom, which is fantastic for us. We, um, you know, we thrive on, on that kind of input and getting information about what works and what doesn't and tweaking things um, to make the app even better. Um, I've listed a couple of things here that if you wanted to find out more, obviously please do go to our website and the QR code is there and the link is there. But we've also got a little form here if anyone um, is interested in finding out more about the app or is you know would like to try it um hopefully in the, in the new year we've got some sort of exciting news coming about free trials so it would be lovely if anybody was interested in giving it a go if they wanted to register that interest there's a little form there just to to fill out um uh, you're very welcome to do that i'm going to just post the link into the chat for everybody Um, and I think all that remains is just say thank you very much, Joe, for hosting, having us, inviting us along. Um, and thank you to Sylvie again. And thank you, everybody else, for joining us this evening. It's been really Yes, fun. thank you for joining us, everyone. And thank you, Joe and Catherine. It was a pleasure. No problem at all. It was, it was fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much for your worked examples as well, Sylvie. Really, really interesting in the way that, Catherine, you sort of you pulled out all the different uh, aspects of SparkJar and and uh, yeah, you just worked seamlessly as a, as a team, very professional. It was it was brilliant, and I I just really liked to see all those great um, language examples uh, based a, a lot lots of which were based around research, you know, retrieval practice, and you can really see that really clearly in the way that it has all mm -hmm. been thought through your approach um, and the way that uh, with a, with a hybrid learning context, the way in which you, a Spark Jar will will cater to you know all the needs you could possibly um, would have in a, in a hybrid context. So I think um, it's a really fantastic tool for sure oh. for, um, uh, for, 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 well, clearly for languages, but I would say across the curriculum, but for languages, I think yes. the, the, the way that you can use the, the video chat, the recording, the mm. audio, the audio feedback, absolutely wonderful. So thank you so much for this, uh, this opportunity this evening. Um, and we are recording, uh, recording um, as I uh, as I said at the beginning. So we'll be able to share this on uh, my YouTube channel, and everyone will be able to uh, get a real insight into how SparkChart can be applied uh, in languages uh, and the way in which you you um, combined other tools such as Book Creator and what have oh, you and pulled it all together. It was, yeah, it was a, a real like you know, so it was a real teacher's presentation. It was fantastic. So thank <laughs> you so much. Um, but for you know, sincerely from from uh, bottom of my heart for both of you, it's just yeah, it's really fascinating. It's, and I think it's just opened up uh, for, uh, opened up our eyes to what Spark Jar can do. Mm -hmm. I, I I noticed at the end just on a, on another point when you were when you did the 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 um the video chat, there was a mm. bit of um, distortion. Is that do you think that maybe is a Zoom thing? The way that maybe Zoom is trying to take over the audio. But, but Probably, normally you wouldn't yeah. hear that distortion, no. is that right? I use it all the time in class with my year 11 because I have a child who is not in lessons at all. And I've never had that, no. um, you know, um, at all. And I demonstrate at the same time, um, you know, and I move in between things. So there's not, uh, because what you can do on live presentation, 
with maybe, um, you know, you can move between the chat and you can go on to the topics and you can go on different tools at the same time. And that still is taking place within um, the app. So uh, your student is present in, 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 in all the activities that you are doing. Um, and they quite enjoy that and, and um, just being part of the classroom, you know, so they're, they're part of it, they love it. And yeah. at the same time, you are demonstrating things. If they've got a slight issue, you ping a whiteboard, you explain it to them on the one-to-one, -one, then you're there with the rest of the class at the same time. So, um, yeah, it works. That's lovely. I can, I can see how that, would, how that would really work and would make the whole experience for everyone, everyone be really inclusive. Mm. So that's, yes. that's wonderful. Lovely. Well, it is. It is past um, half past nine now. I'm sure you. Uh, I'm sure you're both feeling very tired, particularly you, Sylvie. You've had a really long day. So thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah. yeah, on behalf of everyone, thank you so much for both of you for this great presentation. It's been really, really interesting. Thank you, everyone. Good night, Laura and Catherine. Uh, it's Karine as well. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> right.